so much for joining me once again. Hello and welcome. Oh, I got a pump, this pump right here. Making uh, some funny noises over here. Let's turn it on and take a listen real quick. You guys hear that? I'm thinking maybe, uh, maybe it's just scaled up around, uh, around the propeller there, and it's just hitting the, hitting the housing. Let's open her up and see what they're supposed to deal with that. Probably scaled up and it's hitting it. With this valve, this, these valves, are, these are good valves right here, very easy, tech friendly, closed, don't need uh, much effort, effortless valves. And uh, also guys, I'm going to be doing the drawing for the giveaway, for that uh, German tool giveaway, if you guys watched my uh, video which was titled an air conditioning technician's work day at the end of the video all the way at the end after the thank you credit uh, it states that to enter a, a German tool giveaway you comment with a hashtag or with a number so that I know that you watched the ending of the video not everybody did it but most did I already took the names out, so you can't go back and comment anymore. So if you commented on it and didn't put a number or a hashtag, don't worry, I have another German tool giveaway coming up after this one that uh, I'll be doing, and uh, hopefully you'll have a chance there to win it. But I'll be drawing out the names. So I just want to let you guys know that I've been just busy, a lot of work, and unable to uh, make the video for it. So I'm going to go ahead and drain this. Alright guys, so I have my uh, my Milwaukee here. 18 volt brushless impact wrench. Also guys, for those of you that like the clip light, this is pretty similar. Same lumens the clip light is like $36. This is at, I bought this at Lowe's. It's called Lux Pro. 220 lumens. And it works just as great. 14 bucks. $14. Half the price of a clip light. And it works just as great. So look for this, guys. At, uh, Lowe's. Anyway, enough rambling. Let's get this on the road right here. Scale up a little bit around the housing. So let this drain out and I'll turn you guys back on. Alright, guys, she's all drained. And let's get her off completely now. What I'll do is I usually like to keep one on, one of the bolts. I'll keep the side one on, one of the side ones, so when it comes off, it'll sort of swing like a pendulum. So if you see there, if you notice, 
sort of like a pendulum. It just swings down. You don't have to hold it. So, a little scaled up, not too bad. This big old I don't know why that's making funny noise like that. I probably can't even spin that. There's no way even getting in there to see any. I would have to open up the other side. I thought maybe I could see it from here, but I'll just bump her, let me just bump it. I'll give it a little bump of a bump. Look at that, she stopped. funny wobble to it. And it is hitting it. It's hitting something. I can hear it. I'm gonna bump it again. I can hear it scraping. Let's give it a little quick bump. You know, it's not a, you know, it's not good to run it dry, but See what's going on, so we're gonna bump it. It. I would have to pretty much disconnect the flange and then from here and just take out this whole piece and see what's what's the problem with it. Open it up. Open it up and see. So I'm just gonna write it up for now. Guys, what I decided to do is dump all uh, scale removing acid in there and just let it sit there for a little bit. And uh, sure enough, what it did, it pretty much, uh, not dissolve it, but it softened it up enough for it to break off the, the, the walls of the balut of the housing. And, uh, and the pump sounds a lot, a lot better. And uh, check out the sound of the pump now. It, it does sound a lot better. Food driver in, and then uh, it had to run for about a few minutes, it just stopped. Very strange. So I have this compressor here. And uh, I keep getting the TH4, uh, which is the overload. This is that compressor that had the cooked wires where I replaced it. Now, if you take a look at this, like 63 amps or 70 amps and I'm nowhere near that so when this compressor starts it 
just cuts out after a few seconds. Oh, there goes my pliers. So right now, when I jump it out, when I jump it out, because every time I will reset the fall, oh shit. If you see here, Take it to the fault review. You see, TH10 is record. And that one was compressor number four, so when I jumped it, compressor number four and, uh, and number 10, those were the wires that I replaced a couple of weeks ago that were cooked. But the overload seemed to be uh, not operating properly. So now that I have them jump, they automatically clear. So if I go to status, I have zero faults. So I wrote those up before. I knew they were bad because that's the only reason why those wires cook. You know, that overload should have picked it up before it even got to that cooking stage. So being that it never cut the system out, automatically pretty much tells you that the overload is not good. I mean, look at that, the clear color of it. That one. And this one. So. But, like I said, the compressor, I'll, uh, I'll uh, take you guys to the other one show you in case you guys didn't watch the video anyway, so. and also check out my new light man I'm telling you 14 bucks at Lobes just like the clip light the same exact but it's a lot cheaper more than half and it has this like it's plastic but it's it almost feels like a rubbery material I really like it $14? I bought two of them so I'm gonna go ahead show you the amperage What this pretty much tells me is that my overload is no good. There's no reason for it to go into fault. The only time it's supposed to go into fault is if I'm above 63 amps. It should hold up to 63 amps. I'm nowhere near that. As soon as I clear the fault, it automatically goes back into fault. So I just, I jumped it out to test it, and it was, did clear it, and it didn't come back. Fault did not come back. So I just wanted to show you guys that.